Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about units of concentration. Specifically, building on our last lecture of solubility, when you dissolve one substance in another, how concentrated is that resulting solution? Well, we have different ways of expressing these units of concentration, so let's look at them here. In this lecture, we're going to convert back and forth between these different units of concentration. But to start, I want to tell you when these things are used in chemistry and sciences. Uh, a lot of times in chemistry, we will use mass percentages, perhaps when you're talking about a solid mixture. So alloys sometimes, uh, maybe sterling silver necklaces, which is an alloy uh, of silver and copper, you might describe with a mass percentage, for example. Parts per million and parts per billion, you'll often see these in environmental chemistry. Because with things like drinking water supplies, it's a lot of times very small concentrations of lead in water that is dangerous. And so you only need one, you know, atom of lead amongst a million waters or so to actually be dangerous. So we use these different units depending on exactly what type of chemistry we're describing. So mass percentage is used a lot of times in solid solid mixtures uh, or other times with uh, solid liquid mixtures. Parts per million, parts per billion, uh, a lot of times in environmental chemistry, uh, but you'll also see them in analytical chemistry. Anywhere where you're trying to find small trace amounts of something in a larger mixture. Now, these last three are pretty ubiquitous in chemistry, especially molarity and mole fraction. You will see in pretty much every type of chemistry, mole fraction you'll see a lot of times in terms of gas liquid mixtures. We'll talk about in a future lecture, Raoul's Law, where we'll see mole fraction, but this is used in a, a bunch of different chemistries as is molarity. Uh, this is probably, you know, used in every single facet of chemistry and, and perhaps the one you're most familiar with is molarity. Molality is a little bit more specific. Uh, the big area that molality is used is colligative properties. That'll be the uh, subject of the next lecture. So, Let's look at each one of these. Mass percentage, exactly what it sounds like. We know what percentage, percentages are, right? One thing over a total, right? Mass of component one over the total mass times 100. That's a percentage. So parts per million, parts per billion are basically just mass percentages, except it's not 100 here for a percentage like we're used to, but a million or a billion. You can also have parts per trillion, but we're not going to convert amongst that. Today, today, actually, that might be parts per thousand PPT, but you can have parts per whatever you want just by multiplying out. So in a way, this mass percentage is kind of like a part per hundred, if you think about it. So parts per million, parts per billion are pretty straightforward. Mole fraction, very similar to a percentage. It's just not mass. It's moles, and there's no times a hundred. So it's still just the moles of one thing divided by the total moles. Exactly what it sounds like a mole fraction. Molarity, you just have to memorize, there's no shortcut here, but molarity is always moles of solute over liters of solution. Now, I wanna spend a, a second here talking about these two words. We've talked about them in the previous two lectures uh, on solubility and solutions, but solute is one component, solution is all the components, okay? So solute is the component that there is not a majority of, solvent, is the majority component. So just as a review to keep in mind as we go through today, uh, solvent is majority component, solute is a minority. It doesn't have to be the thing present in the least amount because there could be you know, five things, four of them are solutes and one is solvent. But the solvent is the majority, everything else is a solute, okay? Together, these things form a solution sometimes abbreviated S-O-L-N, okay? So molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. So moles of one thing over liters of volume of everything. But be careful here, notice molality, moles of solute over a mass of just the solvent. So this is the one thing on this entire slide that students mess up the most. They always wanna make this kilograms of the solution, but it's kilograms of just the solvent only. 
Okay, so be careful on that point. Now, let's look at actually using some of these and, and calculating these components in various mixtures. So let's take a look at this first practice problem. I encourage you to try the problem. Pause the video, try it yourself, then watch me work it out because the best way to learn something is to struggle with it. Even if that means you struggle and fail, putting that work in, putting pen to paper, trying to work this out is really, really important. So please do try to pause the video and solve this. Even if you kind of have no idea where to begin, struggle anyways, try to write stuff down, it helps. So pause the video now and try to solve it. Otherwise, I'm going to proceed with solving it. So an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid spoiler alert, uh, contains 36% HCl by mass. Calculate the mole fraction of HCl in the solution. So let's start there, okay? Calculate the mole fraction of HCl in the solution. I know mole fraction of HCl. will be moles of HCl over moles total. That's what a mole fraction is. It helps a lot of times, especially in these wordy problems, to just write out everything you know in formulas. That's what we're after. So we know to calculate this mole fraction of HCl, I need to know the moles of chlorine, and I need to know the moles total. Now, a solution of hydrochloric acid contains 36% HCl by mass. So we should write this out, 36% HCl as a mass percent. Well, that means there is 36 grams of HCl per 100 grams total times 100. Now, I don't know what the total grams is, okay? But it doesn't matter. This is just giving me a ratio. So the 36% here, I'm free to pick any grams total. It doesn't matter if it's actually one liter or five kilograms. This is a ratio, and I'm converting it to a ratio. So just pick, say, 100 grams. So this mass percent, 36%, I'm going to say 36 grams HCl per 100 grams total. Okay, And so now I have a way of calculating the mole fraction. I'll need the moles of HCl, but that's okay because I have the grams of HCl. 36 grams of HCl, I can easily convert to moles with a molar mass Using my periodic table, here's hydrogen, here's chlorine. Add those together for my molar mass. 36.46 grams per mole. And I have a moles of HCl of 0.987. That is what I'm going to put in right here. This 0.987 moles of HCl. Now I need moles of total. I'm gonna get moles of total from this moles of HCl plus the moles of the rest of the solution. And here's where you might be uh, a little confused or afraid, okay? It's an aqueous solution. That tells me it's HCl plus water. I know it's 100 grams total. So this 100 grams total consists of 36 grams HCl, and if you do the math, 64 grams of not HCl, meaning aqueous water. So I actually know the grams of H2O. So I have to take that grams of water and convert it with a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole and I get 3.55 moles of water. And now I have everything I need to solve the problem. The moles of HCl and the moles total. The moles of HCl is 0.987, and the total moles is this HCl plus the moles of water. So this is 0.987 plus 3.55. So 0.987 divided by 0.987 plus 
That should give you a final answer here, and I'm leaving some space at the bottom for the second part of this question. That should give you a final answer of 0 0.22. So that is our final answer for part A here, the mole fraction of HCl. Boom. Now, we can also calculate the molality of HCl. Molality of HCl, and the abbreviation here for molality is lowercase m, molarity is uppercase m. So be careful because sometimes I wouldn't write molality, I would just write a lowercase m. You need to know that's molality and not molarity. But molality is going to be the moles of solute, which we just obtained in the previous slide, divided by the kilograms of solvent. So HCl molality is going to be the moles of HCl, well, I already have that from my previous work, 0.987 moles of HCl, divided by kilograms of solvent. It is not the total mass like it was in part one, but just the solvent, which is just water, the majority component. So here I need kilograms, not grams. That 64 becomes 0 0.064 kilograms of water. And this represents my molality. I should get about 15 molal of HCl at the end. The moles of HCl divided by the kilograms of water. Okay, so that's how you transition between some of these different units. Here we did percent, mass percent, to mole fraction and molality. Okay, but you could do this to moles per liter, you can do parts per million, and we can get some practice with another practice problem. So, pause the video here and try to work through calculating the part per million and part per billion given this information. Feel free to pause now and try this out, otherwise I'm going to proceed with solving it. Parts per million will be the mass of sulfur dioxide divided by the total mass of the solution times a million. Okay, and make sure these masses have the same units. So here I'll go with both grams. The mass of SO2 is given directly in the problem. I'm going to convert it to grams just because I like that. So the mass here is 0 0.011 grams of SO2. And I need this with the total mass. Well, the total mass is going to be this mass of SO2 plus the mass of water, which I have to figure out, and all of this times 10 to the 6. Just plugging in the answers here, we're plugging in the numbers to this formula that I've written. So to solve this, I need the mass of water. Well, luckily I have the volume of water, 2.0 liters of water, and I'm told that it's one gram per milliliter. So if it's not two liters, it's in milliliters, we multiply by a thousand, this is 2000 milliliters of water. And now I can use the density, don't even really have to do a calculation here since it's one gram per one milliliter, it's a one to one ratio, and milliliters just turns into grams. So this is 2000 grams in this solution. So that's the number that goes right here. And now I have everything I need to substitute in. 0 0.011 divided by 2000.011. Right? This number is probably not going to usually affect things too much, but I'll keep it along for the ride anyhow. And I should get an answer like 5.5 parts per million. Okay. I keep track of my sig figs here. I started with two, two sig figs and two sig figs. So I'm going to report two in my final answer. Now, I can also, so my answer here would be 5.5 ppm. I'm also asked to convert this to parts per billion. And parts per billion, the only thing that changes is this ppm is a ppb, and the 10 to the 6 is a 10 to the 9. Everything else stays the same. 
And well, you get 5,500. You've just multiplied by a thousand going from parts per million to parts per billion. Okay, and that'll always be the case. You'll always have this relationship between parts per million and parts per billion because in a billion, there's a thousand times more of the stuff. So if it's 5.5 ppm, then it's 5,500 ppb. It's 5.5 million part per trillion. And so these conversions can get quite simple when you keep that in mind. So that'll do it for today's lecture where we did some practice problems sort of quantifying these different units of concentration and talked a little bit about what they're good for. Now that we have this in mind, we're going to move forward in the next lecture and talk about colligative properties. Why does the freezing point of salt water differ from pure water? Why does the boiling point of salted pasta water go up and cook at a higher temperature than regular boiling water, increasing, or I should say decreasing your overall cooking time? Why do red blood cells explode when you drink too much deionized water? Don't do that. But you'll learn out, you'll learn why uh, in the next video. So that'll do it for this lecture. See you next time.